Hi, this is Greg Swanson, mental strength coach and owner of WarriorMindCoach.com. When I first started coaching, one of the things that I wanted to help my clients and other individuals know are some key principles about developing mental strength or, or what mental strength is about and how it applies to business, sport, and life. Well, after 10 years of working with clients, doing more research, I've revised that list a little bit. And what I'd like to do is go over these mental strength principles, I guess you could call them 2.0, for success in business, sport, and life. And so the first one is to be the warrior. So there's a cause and effect. Don't be the effect, the victim. The victim is on the effect side of the equation. Things are happening to you as the victim. And when we can be on the cause side, meaning the warrior side, we're taking action, we are then being able to cause an effect. And what that means is that you either have results or excuses. You can't have both. The, war, the, the warrior creates the results. The victim justifies the excuses. And remember, excuses only satisfy the person who is making them. But when you have results then you own those results. Whether the results are what you want or not, you still own the results without any excuses. And you need to be accountable. So the warrior is accountable and responsible for your results. So once you get the results, whether you like it or not, you are still responsible for it. This is extreme ownership. This is owning your life, your actions, your results. This is the this is the number one rule in the mental strength principles is that you must be the warrior. You need to be causing an effect and you need to be cr creating results, not excuses, and you need to be accountable and responsible for your results. Number two is set goals. Yes, set goals. Get those goals outside your comfort zone. If you set a goal within your comfort zone, it's not a goal. It's just a to-do list because you've already done it. It doesn't take any degree of effort. It doesn't take any um, degree of being uncomfortable. So you want to set goals and you want to set them out your comfort zone. I like looking at three goals. One just outside your comfort zone, which would be your main goal. And then you would have a, 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 a stretch goal and then a reach goal. And you shoot for the reach and you will hit the stretch and you'll far surpass your regular goal. But this needs to be out of your comfort zone. Next is, remember, even when you set your goals and it's outside your comfort zone, there is no failure. There's only feedback. So you take a look at the actions that you did and you look at the results and go, that's not what I want. I'm not a failure, but I know that that action is not supportive in where I want to go. So remember, there is no failure. So when we know there's no failure, we can really set some great goals and take some wonderful action and take disciplined action to go after those goals, knowing that there's no failure, but only feedback. The, and this means that you have to have behavioral flexibility, meaning if you have a goal and you set a goal and you want to do it, and you've kind of done a similar goal the same way and you keep trying it over and over again, right? Like that's insanity, right? Is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Well, here you need to have behavioral flexibility. This is so important, whether you're dealing in relationships or going after your goal. We have to try different ways. This, why, if there's, this, why, this is why there's no failure, only feedback. You get the feedback, you try something different. You get another feedback, you try something different. You get another feedback, ah, that's working. But you can't do that unless you have behavioral flexibility. Everything, everything, everything is your choice. There is this concept of I'm so busy, I don't have enough time, I don't have this, whatever. You and only you are responsible for everything on your plate. That means whatever you put on your calendar, you do it. You're saying yes to it. You're saying yes to it. Everything is your choice. When you have a choice, even though we don't think we have a choice, it is still our choice. Well, I, ha I have to go to work. No, it's a choice. 
yes, it's a choice. If you don't go to work, you might, you might not get paid, but you still have that choice. And when you know that everything is your choice, that gives you the power to make the right choices. So you can't complain that you don't have enough time because it was your choice to put all of that on your plate. In addition, you need to decide what you want, right? So if we, if our time is filled, if we're saying yes to everything, we're saying no to a lot of other things. By saying yes to something, we're saying no to a lot of other things. But often we are saying yes to things we don't really want. So you need to determine exactly what do you want? Many people don't take that time. They just wake up, they go to work, the boss t- tells them what to do, their, their spouse tells them what to do, the kids tell them what to do, and they have no idea what they want. You need to decide what you want. That is your choice. Also, once you know what you want and you have a choice, the decision is, will this action, will this behavior move me forward towards what I want or will it not? And if it does, then you put it on your plate. If not, you don't put it on your plate. You don't take time with it. So we need to understand that you are responsible for everything you put on your plate. But once you decide what you want, you'll then be able to discern what will help you move forward and what will help you not. But again, everything, everything is your choice. Tell great stories. So all of our conversations in our mind and externally are stories. They're not lies. They're stories based on our beliefs, based on our past experiences, based on our perceptions, based on our filters, based on everything. Everything that's inside our unconscious mind is help us create a story. So let me ask you, what, you know, if, if everything is a story then why not tell great stories that empower you? Are you telling a story of lack, of scarcity, of complaining, right? Because the, the victim, to go back to our very first one, the victim complains, blames, and justifies. So are you creating a victim story in your life or are you creating a hero story in your life where you overcame something, you overcame an obstacle, you slayed the dragon, you got the gold, you brought it back to your village. Tell great stories that empower and inspire you. And keep in mind that words not only describe, but they create. So when you are telling a story, you are creating that event in your mind. And that is going to bring up emotions for you. And you are going to be then creating that in your mind and your emotions are going to match it. Your behavior is going to match it and you're going to attract to you what that story is. So everything's a story. Tell empowering warrior stories and keep in mind that words not only create, words not only describe, but they also create. Finish what you start. Once you decided to do something, you do it all the way. So you start strong and finish stronger, whether that's a workout, whether that's a sales meeting, whether that's a relationship. You started strong and you finish stronger. You always, always, always have to finish what you start. If you aren't finishing what you're starting, let's go back to it's your choice. You're putting too much on your plate. That's by your choice. You need to decide what you want. You start strong and finish stronger. And how you do anything is a reflection of how you do everything. So if you're working out and you don't finish your workout, chances are somewhere else in your life, you're not finishing something. We need to build up the habit. We need to build up the discipline to finish what you start. You have to finish what you start because it's going to affect every single area of your life because how you do anything is how you do everything. Then when you're asking, before you start though, asking what will stop you? Because we want to make sure that you have addressed any issues that come up that will stop you. And then either ask yourself, if this comes up, will it stop me? No, I'll work around it. But if this comes up, will it stop me? Yes, then don't start it. You should start something that you will always finish regardless of what happens. If you have, a, if you have some thought that, well, if I can't go here, if I can't do that, if I can't get, get this person, I'm not going to do it, then don't do it. 
Don't go halfway through a project and abandon it because how you do anything is how you do everything. So think of what will stop you. If something will, don't start it. If something won't, then you start it and you finish what you start. You need to live by a code. A warrior always has a code to live by. And that code is based on your values. So what are your values? There are plenty of online assessments to help you with your core values. We all have values in life. We have values in relationships. We have values about our career. We have values about friendships. But what are your values? You need to know what your values are. And if you don't and you don't uh, want to take the assessments, get with a coach. A coach can, can pull out of you what your values are in life. Because when you have your values, how, how, how do you know what you want to live? How do you, how do you know you want, how you want to, li- to live your life? Your values give direction. They give guidance on how you want to live your life. You want to live it full of integrity, of inspiration, of courage. All of those things, is, it, all those values, your code helps you live the life that you want. If you don't have a code, if you don't know your values, other people are going to influence you one way or another to live your life. That's not the way of the warrior. The warrior has a code. They have values and they know how they want to live their life. And then it makes decisions easier. Once you have your values and your code written out and you have a, you're facing a decision, right? Because everything is a choice. You then, the choice is easy. Does it align with my code? Does it align with my, my values or does it not? If it aligns with your values, you do it. If it doesn't, you don't do it. It's very simple. It's very, very easy once you start to live by a code. You also want to create some emotional understanding. This has also been called emotional intelligence. But when we can clearly identify the emotions, and there are, there are great charts out there that go into different types of emotions, right? Because words create, they just don't describe. So when we are talking about, if we only have a limited vocabulary on how we describe our emotions, we're going to be living in the state of those emotions, anger, sadness, fear, guilt. And that's all we have if we're pissed off or if we're angry. But if we can, if we can have, you know, go into words like agitated and slightly disturbed or whatever that might be in the case, when you can identify those emotions then you can identify the cause. But if you are only using five words to describe your emotions, it's going to be hard to identify the cause. So this is for yourself, not so much for somebody else, but you as a warrior and and want to have these principles. You need to understand the emotions that you're feeling and the cause of them. And then when when you are in a conversation, this is... um, Don Miguel Ruiz from The Four Agreements. Nothing is personal. Don't take anything personal. When we start taking things too personal is when our emotions get escalated and they start to rise. When we know that whatever is happening between us and another person, it's more about them than it is about us. We're able to understand our emotions, where it's coming from, question it, and then temper it down. Now, the next one here is we want to train your body. So the physical is the gateway to the mental. I'm a big, 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 big believer. So my principles on self-mastery is the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual. The physical gives way to the mental. The mental gives way to the emotional. And the emotional gives way to the spiritual. You need, you need, you need to train your body. That doesn't mean you have to do CrossFit. That doesn't mean you have to do bodybuilding. But you need to push it. You need to push your body to the limits regularly so you know what mind chatter comes up for you. Number two, this also improves your self-image. When you look good about yourself, so your body is a reflection of how you think about yourself and people are interpreting it whether you like it or not. And again, we, uh, how we project ourselves is how people are going to accept us, generally speaking. There's a lot of stuff here unconsciously, but it improves your self-image. When you can go to the gym, and I'm not saying losing weight, but when you can go to the gym and 
give it all you got and you still may be 40, 50 pounds overweight, your self-image will improve because you have tackled something you didn't want to do or something that was tough. It's going to help you. So train your body, push it through. And you're also going to be able to live life to the fullest. When you train your body, you're going to be able to go on those big hikes. You're going to be able to do your kayaking. You're going to be able to do your your mountain biking. You're going to be able to do all of those things when you train your body. When we're out of shape, we're not able to experience what nature has to offer us. And when you train your body, you're able to build up your endurance, your cardiovascular, your muscular system and you're going to be able to go out and enjoy life because life right when we talk about experiences we want to have experiences experiences are doing things out there out in the world and when we train our body we're preparing ourselves to really enjoy life to the fullest and then finally we want to empty your mind whether that's through meditation or prayer we want to every single day empty our mind and when I say empty it, it's not, not, it isn't so much not thinking, it's not attaching to the thoughts. If you look out your window and see a, a flock of birds fly by, you're not going to jump out the window and try to grab a bird. That's what meditation is like for your thoughts. You have a thought, you notice it, it goes. You have a thought, you notice it, it goes. After time, when you start meditating enough, you may have less and less thoughts, some of the very Uh, profound monks have been meditating for a long time. They don't have any thoughts. If you're here in Western society, it's pretty hard not to have thoughts. So we want to make sure that we empty it, meaning keep the thoughts going, not create an empty mind, although that's the ultimate goal, but we want to empty it. So a thought comes in, we let it go. A thought comes in, we let it go. And that can be done through meditation or prayer. When, when this happens, we're able to get touch with our soul, our inner voice. And by emptying our mind and meditating, we're able to connect with infinite intelligence and pick up on our intuition. Our intuition will improve. That gut feeling will improve when we empty our mind. Our mind takes over much, much of our decisions every single day. And when we can move from our mind to our heart, we will tend to make better decisions. So by meditating and, and being aware of the infinite intelligence around us, it's going to improve our intuition. Then we're, uh, then we're able to do mental rehearsal because now we are controlling our thoughts. And mental rehearsal is, is pre, is imagining, is fantasizing, if you will, about an event that you want to have happen. That could be a sales meeting, that could be a date, that could be a vacation. But when we're able to empty our mind and then be able to create in the screen in our mind, in our inner mind, our inner eyes, we're then able to mentally rehearse what we want. And it has been proven the more we mentally rehearse what we want, the more we will get that. So there you have it. Those are my mental strength principles for uh, business, sport, and life 2.0. Again, this is Greg Swanson, owner of warriormindcoach.com. I would love to hear your, f- your feedback on this. Use the comments below. Contact me on Facebook or LinkedIn, Instagram, and I hope you enjoy this.